Good afternoon. The AFL season has been put on hold over the coronavirus crisis as the states close their borders. Australia in lockdown. The Prime Minister warns people not to travel interstate. And economy boost. A second stimulus package unveiled. A breakdown of the $66 billion plan. This is 7 News with Angie Asimus. Good afternoon. All the details on the government's announcement shortly. But first to breaking news. The AFL season has been put on hold. For more, Matt Carmichael joins me. Matt, what can you tell us? Good afternoon, Angie. Well, we were just watching the second last game of the first round of the AFL between Hawthorne and the Brisbane Lions. They've gone to half-time and CEO Gillan McLaughlin called a media conference. He walked in and he delivered this stunning news. Today, after a meeting with the AFL Commission, the AFL has moved to immediately suspend the 2020 Toyota AFL Premiership season at the conclusion of this weekend's matches. The AFL industry is facing its biggest financial crisis in our history. So the season has been put on hold until May the 31st at the least. That will be reviewed sometime in April. The AFL women's season has been called off altogether. They're in the middle of their finals. Carlton beat Brisbane today, but no premiers will be decided. Now, this decision was essentially forced by the federal government's ban on non-essential travel today and then the South Australian and Western Australian governments closing their borders. Of course, four teams based in those two states. It's just impossible for the code to go ahead. What this means for the NRL and A-League, we're not sure yet. We're waiting to see from that. We'll have more details on that in 6pm. 7 News at 6pm. Angie. Matt Carmichael with that breaking news. Thank you. All non-essential travel, including within Australia, should be cancelled. That's the new directive from the federal government in a drastic escalation of restrictions today. The Prime Minister urged Australians not to travel interstate and warned of harsher draconian measures if people ignore social distancing rules. We are moving immediately to recommend against all non-essential travel in Australia. The PM then unveiled a second stimulus package worth $66 billion aimed at helping businesses and workers weather the coronavirus storm. For more, let's go to senior political correspondent Tim Lester in Canberra. Tim, these are unprecedented measures. Indeed, Angie. Extraordinary times and you would say warrant extraordinary measures. All states moving in the direction of, if not absolutely, to close their borders, as you said. Scott Morrison today announcing a ban on all non-essential travel across the country. The Prime Minister is telling people to stay home, only leave home when you really need to. He was speaking in his courtyard here at Parliament House late morning those holidays that you might have been planning to take interstate uh, over the school holidays, cancel them. That's what it means. That's regrettable and I know the impact that will have. And Tim, the $66 billion stimulus announced today will include more welfare payments? That's right, Angie. The idea is, to some extent at least, to bolster the safety net that people will rely on, uh, especially as the number who rely on a safety net grows. That is, uh, as is expected, a far larger number of unemployed. A new coronavirus supplement worth $550 to be added, essentially doubling the job seeker payment temporarily uh, for the next six months, cost $14 billion. In addition, the $750 stimulus payment, there was one announced 10 days ago, the government is providing another one. This one will be paid uh, to eligible welfare recipients in mid-July. You can now also, if you suffer a significant uh, drop in income, withdraw $20,000 from your superannuation. Uh, before July, $10,000, another 10 after July. And the deeming rate for pensioners has been lowered by a further uh, 0.25%. Businesses have also been offered a wage subsidy lifeline, up to $100,000 in tax breaks if they keep their workers on the payroll, a backstop for companies that employ 7.8 million Australians. There's a 50-50 deal with the banks too, guaranteeing loans for small businesses up to a quarter of a million dollars with no repayments due for six months. Here's Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. Today's announcement 
will provide hope and support for millions of Australians at a time when they need it most. We know that there is more to do and we will continue to do what it takes. And this is not the last of it, Angie. The government is quite open about saying more stimulus will likely be needed. The Prime Minister has brought forward a meeting with state premiers in what he calls the National Cabinet. That's about to meet here, uh, or at least he's here, and will hold a phone hookup, bringing them together. And uh, tomorrow, Parliament sits to pass the stimulus measures. Angie? Right, Tim Lester with those developments. Thank you. Victoria will close all schools from Tuesday as the number of cases spikes. Live to Christy Cooper in our Melbourne newsroom. Christy, the government wants a complete lockdown of non-essential activities. And in a statement this afternoon, Premier Daniel Andrews confirmed he will be shutting Victorian schools on Tuesday by bringing forward the school holidays. But more broadly, we now have confirmation the Premier will also shut down all non-essential activities across the state. Essential services that will stay open include chemists, banks, petrol stations and most importantly for those who have been concerned, supermarkets will also remain open. The Premier says he'll be making it clear to the National Cabinet tonight in a phone conversation that he will proceed with this shutdown over the next 48 hours. This is a decision he's made based on advice from the Victorian Chief Health Officer. People still have a lot of questions like what's going to happen with childcare? What exactly does non-essential services mean? At this stage we are expecting to get most of those answers tomorrow morning. The Premier says if this shutdown doesn't go ahead, more Victorian Victorians will die. Angie? Thank you, Christy. Sections of Sydney could also undergo a staged shutdown over the next two days. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian will take tough new measures to the National Cabinet meeting tonight. Supermarkets, petrol stations, pharmacies and home delivery will be among the services to remain open. Schools will also be open tomorrow pending a further announcement by the Premier. The new measures come after Sydney siders were slammed for ignoring strict social distancing rules at public places like Bondi. We now know new cases have been linked to the popular beach. As Miley Hogan reports, authorities had no choice but to crack down. Good afternoon. Well, it is an unsettling sight, a sunny day in Sydney and an empty Bondi beach. But this is what the government says is necessary after people ignored the advice to practice social distancing and came down to Bondi beach anyway. And a few hours after this fence went up, they have been reminded why it is important. Backpackers staying in Bondi have tested positive to coronavirus. Positive cases attended two parties, one at the bucket list on March 15, the other at Club 77 at Darlinghurst on that same day and then into 4am the next day. People who attended the party have been told if they are showing any symptoms, they need to self-isolate. Beaches right around Sydney today are being closed as the government continues to push the importance of self-isolation. Yeah, no, beaches are, are closed as per the government. And police are now asking for the public's help to catch people who are not self-isolating. If people are aware of a person who has returned from overseas and is not sticking to the 14-day self-isolation period, they can now be reported to Crime Stoppers. Police are reminding people the penalty for breaking that, the maximum penalty, is six months in prison and an $11,000 fine. Thank you, Miley. A group of American tourists remains in quarantine in South Australia's Barossa Valley. The number of cases in the state has jumped by 33, taking the total to 100. Elise Baker reports. Well, this luxury lodge in the Barossa Valley remains closed today after a number of American guests tested positive for COVID-19. The group arrived in Australia, landing in the eastern states before it was mandatory for all overseas visitors to self-isolate and were on a wine tasting tour in the Barossa when some started showing symptoms. They've been isolated in their luxury hotel ever since. News of this cluster of cases is taking its toll on the famous wine region. Many cellar doors have decided to close. Those that remain open have put extra measures in place to keep staff and visitors safe, including asking those who are unwell or have been overseas recently to stay away for now. The Barossa is still open. Uh, we're still open for business and I think, yeah, come and visit us. Don't come and visit if you've arrived in less than 14 days. And I think 
if you've been in contact with someone, please, please stay home so that we can keep everyone safe. Despite today's announcement that South Australia's borders will close on Tuesday, managers here are hoping to reopen a week before Easter. Thanks, Elise. The corona death toll in Italy has reached a new high with close to 800 dead in a single day. The importance of social distancing has also become even more paramount in the UK as doctors fear soon they'll only have enough ventilators for one in eight patients. Sarah Greenalt reports. Well, Angie, Italy yet again has recorded its highest daily death toll, 793 lives lost in just 24 hours. The country's death toll is now nearing 5,000. In Spain, more than 1,300 people have died. In France, 562. And of the people currently in intensive care there, more than 50% are aged under 60. In the hardest hit towns in northern Italy, the morgues are over capacity. Military convoys are now transporting bodies to crematoriums, families families haven't been able to hold funerals because they are in isolation. The doctors in the intensive care wards are exhausted. At Cremona Hospital, a neurosurgeon is now working on COVID-19 patients and she has this message for the world. Don't think that uh, it's happening here and it can't happen everywhere else. It will. Because it will. This was the first full day of all pubs, restaurants and gyms being closed here in the UK. There is a pretty eerie feeling, especially in these touristy areas that are usually so busy. But in the suburbs, many people are still not practising social distancing and that has doctors from the National Health Service extremely concerned, especially after another 53 people died here in the UK. They are calling radio stations anonymously voicing their concerns. They fear that in a couple of weeks' time, for every eight patients who require a ventilator, they will only have one, so they'll essentially be choosing who lives and who dies. Sarah, thank you. Still to come in 7 News, the dramatic rescue operation on Sydney's Harbour Bridge. Also, are we close to a coronavirus vaccine? A promising treatment gets a huge funding boost. And from one country legend to another, Dolly Parton farewells Kenny Rogers. Hear her moving tribute next. Coronavirus, the exclusive in-depth investigation. What does it mean for your future, your finances, the stimulus, the vaccination? Will it work? We have the facts. Coronavirus, the must-see special, tonight at 7. Yes, it's the first word of any new discovery. Telfast helps you say yes with fast, non-drowsy hay fever allergy relief. Turn a half-hearted yes into an all-in yes. Telfast. Live your life. Harvey Norman, biggest ever five-day sale. This HP Core i5 laptop, $8.98, save $200. Sony 65-inch 4K TV, hot price, plus bonus Rebel e gift card and delivery and warm-out installation. This Samsung black steel fridge, just $11.54. Up to 25% of Australian-made lounges and dining room furniture. Upgrade to a king size for just $1 more on selected queen mattresses and bed frames. Big brand rail showers from $87, plus $99 entire home carpet installation. Hurry, sale ends Monday. Go! I can have a strong skin, like... Hello? Sir, did you say strong skin latte? Yeah, medium, please. When only drive through will do, we'll be here. Bog day. It's parked. <laughs> We've got a... Parked! <clears throat> the powerful Amarok V6 Canyon, now with a 1.99% annual rate. There's been a delicate rescue operation on the Sydney Harbour Bridge after a bridge climber fell down a ladder. The 52-year-old was with a tour group when he tumbled about five metres. He suffered head and spinal injuries and had to be lowered to safety. He was taken to hospital in a stable condition. 
A pilot and passenger have suffered minor injuries after their light plane crashed in the New South Wales Southern Highlands. Crews located the aircraft around 2.30 today after someone on board called triple zero and set off an emergency beacon. The pair was taken to hospital in stable conditions. Queensland is leading the way in the search for coronavirus vaccine, announcing a multi-million dollar fund. The state has joined with the federal government to support the promising development of a treatment. Emily Arnold has more. This $17 million funding package will help fast track a world leading vaccine being developed right here at the University of Queensland. The state government contributing $10 million, the federal government $3 million and the Paul Ramsey Foundation $3.5 million. Every month that we can save in developing the virus will save millions of lives globally. The funding will allow UQ and its research partners, the Doherty Institute and CSIRO, to undertake clinical trials to test the safety of the vaccine candidate, also enabling the large-scale manufacture of a potential vaccine if successful. As soon as it's deemed that we have enough information on the safety and that this vaccine will work, we'll have stocks there ready to go. The University of Queensland is the only organisation in Australia and one of six globally to be tasked to develop a vaccine against the novel coronavirus. With that approach, we should carve about six months off our delivery timeline and so bring that 18 month timeline down to about 12 months so beginning of two, 2021. The researchers here have been affected by social distancing measures split into two teams but they are still working around the clock determined to develop this vital vaccine. Thanks, Emily. At least six people have died in a bridge collapse as wild weather hits America's Midwest. Floodwaters washed away a section of the roadway in Indiana, taking drivers and their cars with it. In neighbouring Ohio, homes were inundated. Roads were left badly damaged as the fast-moving current eroded foundations. North Korean ruler Kim Jong-un has supervised an artillery firing competition. The diminutive leader was photographed watching on as the army practised drills. The competition was staged a day before a report North Korean weapons test. The South Korean military reports a short-range missile was fired into the sea. A heartbroken Dolly Parton has paid tribute to her friend Kenny Rogers. The country music legend died yesterday aged 81. Dolly says she found out watching TV that he had passed away. I loved Kenny with all my heart. My heart's broken and a big old chunk of it has gone with him today. And I think that I can speak for all his family his friends and fans when I say that I will always love you. The pair released Islands in the Stream together in 1983. A floral tribute is now growing at Rogers Star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Well, sport is next with Mel McGock. And Mel, sadly, we have seen the last of the AFLW action today. Yeah, we have, Angie, as we heard after it was called off by the AFL boss a short time ago. We've still got highlights from today, though, as the Blues enjoyed a big win over the Lions in the AFLW. But a star could be in strife, while the Ruse big comeback came at a cost in the AFL. And Tommy Turbo's tremendous try savers keep the NRL Premiers winless after two rounds now in the NRL. It's tax time. Stimulate your business now. Check your business's eligibility for the government instant asset write-off. Purchases made before June 30. The Ram 1500 pickup truck each utes for breakfast. Nivea Q10 Power, Australia's number one anti-age day cream, contains natural Q10 identical to the one made by your skin to visibly reduce wrinkles. Nivea Q10 Power, 100% skin identical, 100% you. Now, Maybelline's first foundation with hyaluronic acid and collagen. New Dream Radiant from Maybelline New York. Radiant coverage plus 12-hour hydration. Skin looks plumped and visibly improved. New Dream Radiant only from Maybelline New York. The pollen count is high, so get ready, hay fever sufferers. Sorry, I can't stay on earth without nasonex allergy. Hay fever is no reason to leave the planet. Upgrade from antihistamines with nasonex allergy and enjoy Earth. Introducing the new GS20 Ultra 5G, Samsung's best 5G phone on Australia's best 5G. Available now with no excess data charges in Australia when you add to any month-to-month -month mobile plan. Beat sensitivity pain fast with Sensodyne Rapid Relief.
clinically proven relief for just 60 seconds. Welcome back. It's been a big day. There will be no AFLW Premiers this year due to the coronavirus. Carlton defeated the Brisbane Lions by 29 points in their semi-final in Melbourne this afternoon, but it all meant nothing when the season was called off. In a bruising encounter which saw two players go down in a minute, Blues Livewire Georgia G was unstoppable. McAvoy with strength manages to chip it through. G's going to get a third. Yeah, not too bad. Credit to the girls down forward though in the midfield. Also, the back was really strong. Taylor Harris was reported for rough conduct. Normally, North Melbourne captain Jack Zeeble's knee injury would be big news, but not today. St Kilda and the Kangaroos played this afternoon before the AFL's bombshell decision to suspend the season. North came from 28 points down to win 56 to 54. Zeeble's got a medial strain um, in his right knee, so again, we'll have to wait and see, but it's still a couple of weeks um, at least. Roos defender Josh Walker was lucky to escape with just concussion after a nasty fall in the opening term, but now they all have at least two months to wait for their next game. The NRL Premiers remain winless two games into the season. Some fans were able to find a way to watch the Roosters and Manly at Leichhardt Oval. In a hard-hitting defensive game, Sea Eagles skipper Daly Cherry Evans proved the difference as Manly won 9-8 to eight and the Roosters went down again. Oh. Yes, it was! A late Cameron Smith penalty gave the Storm a 12-10 win over the Sharks. Cronulla captain Wade Graham limped off with an ankle injury. Players admitted struggling to adjust to the A-League's crowdless Sydney derby. Sydney FC took the lead in the first half, with star striker Adam LaFondra applauding the empty stands at Bankwest Stadium. But it wouldn't last as the Wanderers equalised late in bizarre fashion. The Wanderers, it loops in. Kwame Abawa. I'm not sure he knew too much about it, but he won't care about it. It finished as a one-all draw with Sydney's lead back to eight points and the Wanderers eighth, a point outside the top six in Angie uh, Team USA. We know the USA swim team, the Olympic team, and has asked for a 12-month delay and now the track and field as well has joined um, the calls for it. Well, other codes are calling it. Seems yes. like it's only a matter of time. It makes sense. Yeah, thank you very much, Mel. Well, still to come in 7 News, we'll have all your Monday weather details right around the country. At APO, we're all about possibilities. So however you live, our flexible home insurance lets you pay by the month at no extra cost. APO. Get set, go. Call 13 50 50. Definitely. Wow. Yes. yes. I'll have a slice of that. Get in my mouth, please. It's the SUV that's ready for anything. With Mazda quality and safety, and now even better value. In petrol for city living, or diesel for what's beyond. New Mazda CX-8, future ready. The world's most exotic fragrances aren't made by us. They're made by nature, tended by tireless workers. And this hard work deserves to be nurtured. That's why we've created Botanica Fragrances infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced and with more planet-conscious packaging. Because when nature gives so much, the least we can do is give back. Botanica by Airwick. A few days ago, John had muscle pain. Then he discovered Voltaren Emil Gel. It relieves pain two times faster and reduces inflammation. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Everything you love about a Subaru meets the effortless efficiency of hybrid. Charge! Introducing the self-charging hybrid, the next generation of Subaru. Charge! Definitely. Wow. Yes. yes. I'll have a slice of that. Get in my mouth, please. Oh. Tonight at 7pm, a coronavirus primetime special. As parts of the country move toward a total lockdown, I'll be joined by the Prime Minister, banking and supermarket bosses and Australia's top medical minds to answer all your questions live. Plus, hear from the scientists leading the race to find a vaccine and a cure. That's the latest, a primetime special, 7 News at 7pm.
Well, in a time like this, it's easy to become overwhelmed by the noise of serious news, but Australians always find a way to pull together. Tom Saker has spent the day with just a few of the people offering help to the most vulnerable in our communities. Well, Angie, more and more communities are binding together to spread acts of kindness, which has been deemed to lower the risk of becoming sick. Dr Vincent Kandra Winata argues that doing a good deed can actually bolster the immune system. Research has shown that by being positive and spread kindness, it helps our body to stay healthy. And videos like this are going viral. Coles Campbelltown's store manager Vaughn can be seen keeping the elderly warm and giving them chairs while they awaited for a restock of items early this morning. After online deliveries from supermarkets stopped recently, Krista Onriques teamed up with the Kindness Factory to make a system called Cart Buddies where people can volunteer to shop for the elderly and vulnerable. If you are in need, if you are self-isolating, please get in touch with us and we can put you in touch with someone who can help with the delivery of groceries or medications or whatever it is. And some people like Bob Brewster have already started helping their neighbours delivering coffee and newspapers and even staying for a chat. Oh, they're wonderful, really. I mean, it's great to have neighbours like it. Although Ted and Kathy couldn't share their love with friends today, they still managed to tie the knot after the wedding they'd planned to have in Italy couldn't go ahead. The love is spreading fast on social media too and there seems to be no shortage of volunteers. But not all those in need are connected online and aware of the support that awaits them. Angie. Thanks very much, Tom. Checking the national forecast now. Onshore winds and a weak trough are causing showers over parts of northeastern Queensland and the top end. Cool winds and a nearby trough are bringing some showers into Tasmania and southern Victoria, while troughs over WA are triggering showers and storms. Elsewhere, though, it is generally settled. Tomorrow's capitals, Brisbane, a shower or two, 28 degrees forecast. A couple of showers about for Sydney as well, 22 degrees, so a little cooler. Canberra, fine, 21. Melbourne, partly cloudy, 18 degrees. An overcast day ahead for Hobart, staying fine in Adelaide 23, sunny and warm again for Perth, aiming for a top of 33 degrees, shower or storm in Darwin with a top of 33 and fine in the Alice, a top of 36 degrees. And that is 7 News for now. Our next bulletin is 7 News at 6. I'm Angie Asimus. Thanks for your company. Have a great night.